Hello there, my dears. We're going to explore lesson 93. Light and joy and peace abide in me. Now, the last couple of lessons might seem a little obtuse, a little oblique, a little hard to wrap your head around since it's talking about the truth of us because it's talking about our strength and our light. And you go, what is that? And we said, just practice, don't try to figure it out because we're trying to move our awareness and that just doesn't happen overnight. However, this lesson is much more clear. You don't have to wonder what it's talking about. Unfortunately, you will be able to identify with the first part of this more easily where it says, now here's what you think about yourself. You think you are evil, dark, sinful, and if anybody could see what you were really like, they would recoil from you as if from a poisonous snake. I can't tell you how many people I've dealt with who really actually do believe if anybody knew who they were, they would be repulsed. So we think that if we really had to look at what is true about us, we would be horrified just seeming like we couldn't possibly live on if we really had to look at it. And then it says these are such firmly fixed beliefs, right along with absolutely believing that the material world is the real world. After all, they go hand in hand. Now it says we've certainly made mistakes. We've been devious. We've been hateful. We've been afraid of things. We've been savage. We've been thoughtless. We've bowed down to everything in the world to try to get our needs met. No question about that. All of that's true in terms of what's happened in the world of time and space. And now it says, we're going to question this, not from the ego separate self's point of view, because there's nothing to question. We go, well, yeah, that's the way it is. But we're going to question it from a very different reference point a reference point from which these idle thoughts are meaningless. They're idle thoughts because they're not loving thoughts. Remember the very first lesson that says nothing I see in this room means anything, and then it talks about all the thoughts that we normally think don't mean anything? Well, here it's being revisited. They're not according to God's will. There's no sharing between the truth, between love and these awful thoughts. And it says, this should be enough to prove to you that you're wrong. But you don't perceive it this way. We are really very stubborn about this. And we decide my story with everything that's wrong with me and somebody else is true. And don't mess with my story. Then it asks, why wouldn't you be thrilled to find out that all of the awful things that you fear that you have done, all the damage that you fear you have done, hasn't done anything. Nothing has gone wrong as a result of this. That everything about you is still pure and holy as you were created. And then to our lesson title, that light and joy and peace do indeed abide in you now this minute not later, not when you get to be improved, but right now. Then it says this picture of yourself, this ego mind, which is nothing but all of these beliefs that we formed very early on and all of our defense structures to try to keep ourselves safe, cannot withstand the truth. The will of God is, of course, the truth. And we think, I can't accept this about myself because this is so alien to what I believe about myself, I think that means this pathetic little self would be destroyed. Well, it's not going to be destroyed, but it's going to be seen as a hallucination. I'm going to give you an example as to how nothing dies or nothing is destroyed. When my little brother and I were little kids, when we would play with our little cars and we would drive them around the edge of a rug in the living room, it was an oriental rug, so it had a design. It was kind of like a little roadway. And we pretended like in the middle was a big lake. So if somebody would walk in the room and walk across the rug, we would say, no, no, you can't walk there. That's the water. That's the lake. You can't do that. Well, when we got a little bit older and that wasn't fun to do anymore, you would not say the lake had been destroyed. 
<laughs> you would say, we stopped pretending like that was a lake and we just let it be the rug that it was. So you see, nothing is going to be destroyed that is actually real. Just something we have imagined about ourselves we're going to lose interest in. That is not being destroyed. That's like getting rid of clothes in your closet that you don't want anymore. You just realize this is no longer for me. So this made up picture of what we are, this ego thing, doesn't do battle. It doesn't hurt us. It doesn't attack us. It hasn't changed anything or reduced our eternal innocence to some little guilty sinful thing or love to hate any more than the imaginary water ruined the rug. An imaginary something can't do anything. It doesn't have any power. Only love has power. So with no power inherent in this self we made, it's harmless. So it says your sinlessness, and I like to trade that word in for innocence. I think that's a nicer sounding word. Your innocence is guaranteed by God because God, whatever you think that is or love, is responsible for your creation. We are an extension of that creator. And that creator knows what you are, knows what I am. And it says you need to repeat this over and over and over because millions of times we've repeated this awful story about how we're more like the poisonous snake thing. So nothing can change us. Nothing can change what was created as eternal. So this ego mind, this sense of separate self that we think we are, is just simply a meaningless fiction. And then it says again, your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. It's interesting because in this lesson, that phrase is mentioned over and over several times, four or five or six times, which is unlike anything so far. Okay, our salvation, our finding our way home, requires only the acceptance of one thought. Now, this can't be hard if one thought is all I have to wrap my head around, which is we are as we were created and not this thing that we think we've made ourselves into. Whatever evil you think we have created, we didn't. Whatever mistakes we've made, the truth about us is unchanged. Because creation, which has got all the power, which is you and me, we are eternal and therefore unalterable. There's nothing about this little made-up story that can actually touch the truth of us. Here's that sentence again. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. This is major rewiring we've got going on here. It says we are forever and ever going to be as we were created, and that includes light and joy and peace inherent in what we are. So it says, all right, for our longer periods today, which if you can do it the first five minutes of every hour, just kind of sneak that in with whatever else is going on when you can, begin by saying, light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness, here it is again, is guaranteed by God. That says all of the beautiful things, all of the wonderful adjectives and what they actually literally refer to are built in to the fabric of my very being and you can't make them go away. Then just set aside this crazy image of yourself as some little small uninteresting thing and then Take the rest of the period and just try to get the sense of what you are made of in place of what you've made up about yourself. And then just as it says, you've only got one thing that you have to think about, which is we are as we were created. Okay, either you are as you were created or as you somehow invented yourself with an immature brain misconnecting the dots when you were little, <laughs> since we're now speaking at the time and space level. One is true, the other one does not exist. So there's no battle between the two. We have to get that. So we want to appreciate our holiness 
and the love and the innocence and the eternal nature of who we are always. So try not to interfere with this self that you actually are by making up stories of what's the matter with you. The stories have to go because behind our tiny little pathetic idols, which is how we are described here in this work, is the majesty of what we are. And we thought that this little thing we made up could possibly change that or obliterate it or hide it. No, now is the time to let it be, to let it be here, to recognize that this brilliance is you now and light and joy and peace abide in all of us. So it says you might not, because of your work, be able to take the first five minutes of each hour, but do this when you can. Again, we've got major rewiring going on here. So always to rewire, I've got to replace these thoughts about being the poisonous snake with light and joy and peace abide in me. My innocence is guaranteed by love itself. My blessedness is guaranteed. Now that's quite a guarantee. There's no point in arguing with a guarantee like that. So try to just devote a minute or two to close your eyes and realize this statement is about you. It's not about the other people listening. This is about you and nothing you have done or said or thought or wanted or been confused about has changed this at all. And then, of course, if a disturbing situation arises, then you want to just realize that nothing can disturb anything. I love this because this is so repetitive. It is so obvious that it's trying to get us to focus our attention on this exclusively and not on the nonsense that we've made up and that we can do so much, not only for ourselves, but for the world today. If I can just keep remembering, I am still brilliant, good, innocent, beloved, and nothing that I've made up about myself has touched anything. All the stuff we made up about water in the middle of the rug didn't change a thing in that living room. I hope you have a wonderful day thinking about these true, real, valuable, fabulous, majestic ideas that are true about you. They're not just theoretical ideas. They're ideas that describe what you really are. Enjoy your day. Bye.